demonstration on Take Two animation for the Amiga. Um, Take Two is an animation line test program. Um, so it's for a traditional animators um, primarily, but it could also be used for stop motion. Um, it's not a it's not a three D system. Um, and some of the misconception about Take Two is is really what its goal is and what it's supposed to do. A lot of people compare it to like. Uh, Deluxe Paint, which you can also animate with, right? You can add frames or whatnot, or um, um, uh, Brilliance. But uh, Take-Two really has a very specific and, and different function, and it's really neat. And some of you may have uh, dabbled, uh, maybe maybe some of you done a lot of traditional animation, maybe some of you haven't done it at all. Um, but it's a really neat art form, and it's uh, like the Amiga. It's something, uh, I think, that is valuable to... Um, to, to keep alive as an art form because uh, the world is becoming more and more computer animated and there's a beautiful art form in traditional animation and we have a lot of tools uh, on the Amiga that make it uh, easy to, to dabble in that hobby. It's kind of like if you wanted to pick up a guitar, well, you can pick up traditional animation on the Amiga very affordably and, and very simply and this program um, is a fantastic way to do that. And uh, before I uh, go on, I should, I'm sorry, I should have introduced myself. My name is Dan Shalek, and um, I live here in California. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my background. Um, um, I went to art school at the Academy of Art in San Francisco. I uh, was an animation major. Um, I went and I worked with Disney Interactive afterwards. I worked in, uh, for Wild Brain and uh, Nickelodeon a little bit, and then uh, went on to the video game industry and... You know, as an artist, you kind of have to do a lot of different things. So uh, uh, now I'm actually doing uh, signs and visual graphic for the school district in Sacramento. So um, a lot of different stuff. Um, but that was my background. When, and I had an Amiga, um, like all of you did probably. And I asked, I found out about this software that was being developed. And I bought it uh, probably about 1994. And at the time when I got it, I think it was like $600 or something, you know what I mean? It was expensive, um, uh, but it was great. I used it all through art school. I used it in the traditional studio. When I went into, uh, when I worked in Disney Interactive, those guys knew all about Take-Two. They had Amigas and they were using this stuff. Up until like 2005, I think Sheraton uh, Visual Arts School, their animation school, was still using Take-Two on Amiga systems for line test. Um, so it's uh, really easy, really powerful, really fun. And... I, a couple, uh, about a month ago, I wrote to the author kind of with this new movement of Amiga th um, donating software and kind of, because he's moved on. He now develops something called Take 5 for the PC and the Mac. And I asked if he would be willing to donate this software to the Amiga community. And he wrote back and not only was he happy to do that and he was willing to donate that software, um, he ended up sending the source code along with it. He actually sent the compiler too, but the compiler is made by another company, and I'm trying to get in touch with them. I'd like them to donate that, so I can't really distribute that. But what he did ask um, the author is he said, I gift the program to the Amiga community, anybody can use it, and the source code is open for people to continue to try to mess with and expand and, and add to it. All that he asked is that obviously we don't use it for commercial purposes, and B, whatever we do with it that we could maybe share with him because it was a pet project of his and he loves it obviously. So um, I put up a website and I'm going um, um, to post that on Amiga.org. I'm going to, I'll let you guys know that here today. It's, um, it's actually live right now. It's uh, Dan, Dan Shalick, like my name, D-A-N-S-C-H-A-L-L-O-C-K dot com slash Amiga slash take two. So that's available. I also brought a CD with the executable here. So if anybody wants to just get a copy of it or something here and doesn't want to download it from the web, that's also available. And so I wanted to post that and go live. I made the website compatible back to Amiga browsers. So if you're doing it on your Amiga, there. Okay. So line testing software. For those of you who have done any traditional animation, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, doing your animation on paper, right? We're talking about drawing that. And what do you go with? It? What do you do with it? Um, the Amiga, the Take Two does something more than just play it back. Eventually, you want to get to something beautiful and cleaned up, right? Eventually, you want to get to something that's nice and it's rendered and it's cleaned up. And there are solutions on the Amiga to do that, but that's not really what Take Two is supposed to do. And I think that's where some of the confusion is. Take Two is not designed to be 
your uh, super broadcast quality output with synced 32-bit sound output, they're assuming that you're either going to shoot it like in the old days on film, or in my case, I use a personal animation recorder and, and stuff like that for outputting super high-res stuff. But that high-res stuff isn't what you need. When, you need. when you're doing tests, when you're drawing, you need to know, um, is that animation working? It, 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 if you're drawing a hand and it's coming across like this, you need to know, is that arc working that you're drawing? Or is it looking jerky? Or where is it? Do I need to add more in-betweens? Is the animation happening too quickly? Is the animation happening too slowly? So that's where Take Two really um, comes in. Um, now, Take Two was developed to use as if with a video camera, any video source. What really works good for this is an old security video camera, like those black and white ones. Those are great because they don't have the little flashing time thing on the screen all the time. Um, uh, I just rigged this thing up this last week because I haven't had a stand up in a little while and I wanted to show and I just got a free video camera to, uh, to use this and it was it was hardwired in the code to work with the Vidi, the Rombo series of digitizers. That doesn't mean that you can't digitize your graphics however you get them into the, your computer and then just load them into Take-Two and I'll show you how to do that. But one of my hopes by having the source code released is I'm hoping that uh, developers can help us um, add other frame grabbers, because you might have, uh, you know, whatever your frame grabber is. I'd like to see that supported in this software, and I, I, I don't know how difficult that would be. But I did go do a search on eBay before I came here, and like these Rombo digitizers, they go for like 15 to $25 now. So that's something that could be had, and you can get the software for free. So I'm going to load up Take Two here and uh, show you guys this interface. Um, what Everything in Take Two is kind of designed to look like what a traditional animator was used to seeing. And in traditional animation, there's something called an exposure sheet, or an X sheet, or a dope sheet. And what that is, is it, the exposure sheet would show, um, it would help the animator know the timing of the frames and how it's going to work. And it would also help the camera person who's going to then shoot it. Because when he's all done, the animator is going to take a stack of pictures. And he's going to take his exposure sheet and he's gonna, he would hand it to the guy who's going to put it in and put the timing right. And it would say stuff like, you know, have the first frame held for three, three frames, the first cell for three frames and the second cell for two, and, and, and loop back and duplicate and ping pong part of the animation, things like that. Oh. The yellow button. Oh, look at that. Okay. Thank you. Um, so... We have an exposure sheet. There's multiple levels. Take Two does support multiple levels of, a of animation, so you can test it with the background because you need to you need to see how your character's interacting with the background, maybe. Um, and it will show that, um, and it will also put a soundtrack in so that you can kind of sync um, what you're doing. Um, I'll just kind of show you basically the uh, uh, the basic menus um, we have over here in Project New Scene Load. Save, remember your config, merge levels, and we'll get into that. Printing your X sheet, because like I said, you would need to be able to take your X sheet and turn it in. You know, I think the best way is actually for me to just turn this on and kind of show you um, how this would work. I'm going to take part of a little scene. I grabbed this last week. I said, well, okay, I'm going to go and do this take two demo for everybody in AmiWest, so I should do a little pencil test um, to, to do that. And uh, I, grab, I grab my son. Gabriel, and uh, I said, Gabriel, can you grab the microphone, and I'm going to digitize you. I want you to say something, you know. Can you say, uh, welcome to Ami West, or something like that. So he said that, and I brought it into the software, and I was messing with it, and I inadvertently sped it up, and it kind of sounded like a chipmunk to me, and I went, well, okay, there it is. So I'm going to animate a chipmunk. <laughs> That's, that's just how that went. I wanted you to know that happened. I'm going to take part of this because this is just five frames here. Um, so I'm going to go to the, I'm going to turn on the, the, the Vidi's plugged in. It just has a video, a, um, RCA video um, input. So you turn on the camera and you just go over to the digitizer. And it will look for, um, it will look for video and it's found it here. Because you see v V1 is on. It's got, it's got multiple ones. You'll also notice there's some buttons over here like VCR and dub. I'll explain some of that in a minute. Um, number of colors, frames. So let me put this down. We're not seeing. It's kind of black right now. And I'm concerned about what that's about. Oh, wait a second. Is that right? 
Hey, okay, now we're getting something. Now, what I've taped down to this piece of wood is a peg, a peg bar. I don't, again, forgive me if you're very experienced with traditional animation, you know this, but maybe you don't know. Um, all animation paper has to be registered because the minute differences between one line to another is going to make something move. So all your pictures need to be lined up. So from Cartoon Color Company, this is the cheapest version of a, of a peg bar you can get. It's plastic and it costs about $2.50. This is like a really nice metal fancy upgraded one that costs maybe $14 or something, okay? Um, I just tape this. You can work with this. You don't have to buy a fancy animation disc. You can buy one of these. You can scotch tape it down to your drawing table and you can flip your drawings and work on that. And then you can tape it down to this board so that as you lay them down and grab them, they're all in the same position. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this is really hard to see what's going on here. Um, I tend to like overscanned and like eight colors. And we've got, I think what's... Uh, happening is we have a strong light coming on one side of this and not on the other. Let me see if I can turn this to get a little more even lighting on it. When I do this at home, I also like to set up a little lamp next to it. Okay. So here's my guy. So if, if you look at this, and the first thing you might be thinking is um, that this looks... It's, yeah, I think it's fine, actually. Um, you think, okay, well, this looks really grainy and kind of low res and all this stuff. A couple things you need to know. Take two shoots everything um, kind of twice. It saves the entire image data. So if I click color right now and you don't see color, you think, well, it's not working. It is. The color's there. It's just not, um, it's not displaying it so that the display can work really fast. But then when you output it, it can be higher. But having said that, um, I like to output my high color animations really high color and really high graphics. So when I finish with all my line testing and my animations look good, I scan them on a flatbed scanner and I put them in the PAR and they're going to look perfect. They're going to look like, you know, Saturday morning television stuff, okay? So for me, I want my tester to work as a tester and I want the output to be high quality. I'm not trying to, to get it to do both. So I put this at like eight colors so I can see this. And, and that, looks, that looks good. That's good enough for me just to see the motion, which is what I want. Um, over here in the auto level, you see how you can click on the... Uh, is it? Oops. Is it here? Oh, I think I have to have one level in first. Okay. All right, so you can give it a name. So like this little part of the move is called the woogie. Don't ask me why. Um, <laughs> um, and so if I said this is uh, frame two, did I hit two? I hit one. Hit one. Okay. Then you can either click grab or the enter key on the far right of the keyboard. We'll grab a frame. Super fast, right? It also shows over here on the screen that, you know, based on my memory at this current resolution, I could grab 938 of these pictures, which is a, a lot when you um, when you do it. Now, there is also, I didn't do it, but there's sliders over here that have to do with like brightness and, uh, and contrast and stuff. So that might actually be a little better. Let me see if I can just grab right over this. See, now, it, okay. So what it did is, this is set up so that you don't have to rename it. If I just keep clicking grab, if you gave it a, a number end, it's going to just start um, iterating the numbers up to the list. So I'll just leave that there. That's fine. So let me grab um, another frame. And we'll just grab a couple of these real quick. Two. And what's really great about this, this is really fast. So like you could be working on part of it and you don't have to animate the whole scene. You can just, uh, you can just, um, do part of your animation and run over to the Amiga, to the Take Two, and take a look and see how that's working, um, timing-wise. Okay, so I grabbed these five frames. Now, I'm going to go back over to the X sheet. Now, there's nothing here. You see, there's nothing to play. If I hit the flipper, there's nothing to flip because there's no cells. But what we have is we have under the on these panels, we have cell panel, picture panel, sound panel, and sample panel. We don't have any cells because... There's nothing in here. These are 
or commands. Um, if I go to the picture panel, we see the ones that I shot. And I think these might be duplicates because I, I did that one twice. But now what I can do is I can select one of them. Now, I'll tell you right now from everything I've read, and I read a review of this program back in the day, like when this was the new hot thing. One of the big criticisms about Take Two is that it didn't use um, words for things. It used little pictures. And for some people, like, why is this box with a white square, why is that copy too? And this one, you know, take away. Like, that doesn't make, so maybe in the future versions we could, you know, we, the Amiga community that tinker with this code, could change that. I'm imagining that this was a localization issue. He doesn't have to make translations of this program for anybody in different languages, right? He can just use this and, 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 and that's good for everybody. Um, but okay, so if I click this, you notice it copied it in. Now, it copied two of them in. Why did it copy two in? In animation, I'm going to go over to base speed for a spec. Base speed. You notice it's at 30 frames a second right now, which is typical for video. I'm really used to animating on at 24 frames a second, which is the standard for film animation. Okay, because that was back when 16 millimeter film or 35 millimeter film went by 24 frames at a time. Um, animations typically would animate on twos, and you can change that what it goes in at. Um, let me go to the picture panel. Is it here? No. So, no. Um, was it under base speed? Where was that? Well, there's a place where you can tell it how many times when you put it down, but you can grab any of these frames anytime. I can click it and drag it, and you see to the right of it, it's telling me how many I've put on this. So if I want to hold that for 12 frames, 13 frames, 14 frames, or one. And you can change that any time. But it's very convenient for it to default to two. Most people animate on twos. And then if you have something that needs to move real slow and carefully, you can switch to ones. But you can quickly change the timing. So let me go back to the picture panel. I'm going to click on number two. Add the, so I'm going number one, number two, number three, number four. And number five. Okay, so now we have those five frames. So if I click this, he starts to do a little dip, right? Now, what we can do is, let's go back to the picture panel again. Let's uh, go back in reverse order, right? So it kind of ping pongs. The three, the two, the one, and back to here. Now if we play that, he's kind of... Um, and I think that big glitch that we were kind of seeing is that first frame. It also might be the projector's not keeping up because I don't remember that. I'm going to delete this. Okay, it's a perfect opportunity. Let me delete, delete a frame. Uh, in uh, the cell panel, so I was showing you the picture panel. So this, the picture panel has to do with all the pictures that you've got saved into this big scanned box of pictures. The cell panel is what you actually have on the exposure sheet, what you're actually looking at. So you might only be looking at half of what you actually have scanned in, okay? So if I go to the cell panel, now we're back to great, you know, boxes that don't necessarily make a lot of sense when you first look at them. But this one is copy to, this one is to delete. This one is to reverse the order. This one is um, to change the cell timing. And I'll show you, I'll show you that stuff. But so if I select these two frames and click this one, it's kind of like where the white squares are eating the black square in the middle, it will take it out. Um, and same over here. Let me do the, oops. Select that, go back to cell panel and eat that. So let's take a look there. Okay. I think some of this, some of the glitching is the projector, but okay. So we can see he's moving now. So what if I look at that and I think, well, okay, but I want my guy, when he kind of goes down, to kind of pause for a second. I can jump back, to, and that's what this timing is about. I can go back to the, to the sheet, and I know that on that five is where he comes down. I can drag that, let's say, for four frames instead. I don't want to play it. So now he's holding more, right, when he goes down. And this is really where take two shines is uh, you're quickly able to make this change and maybe you go, okay, I like that timing, but I don't really want him to freeze there in this dip position. I want there to be, I want there to be some movement while he's down there. Well, now I know by looking back at my exposure sheet, 
I know that I, I've got one, two, three, four frames being held here, but it's too stiff. So here's where I'm going to add in-betweens. So now I'm going to go back to my drawing table, and I'm going to add some more frames kind of right down there where, where he's doing that. But take two, because I was able to visually see that right away, I know what I need to do to go back and, uh, and add to that in order to, to make that work. Let me take um, this off. I'll show you. I grab <laughs> so we, uh, I'll show you the scene that we uh, loaded up, and it'll give me a chance to show some of the different things we can do. Um, and the functions on it. Here's this. So here's our little our little chipmunk guy with some few frames and some sound loaded up, and I'll, I'll show you how that works. Okay. <laughs> now, did you notice at the end that it started to look a little bit jerky? Like he's like, welcome ready to anime West. Almost like a Japanese animation kind of real froze there for a sec. Well, what happened is I was running out of time and so I didn't have any more. I, 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 didn't, I needed to do about 12 more in between frames and I didn't have time to draw them. But it, was, it allowed me to, you can, first of all, I can see visually where there's a sound. If I go over here to the flame flipper, let me go over where the guy starts. I'm going to stop it when he starts to talk. you got to get through the, the snap step and the boogie and the woogie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> That's Gabriel, by the way, my son. He's a star, star voice of that character, by the way. <laughs> He's the inspiration for the attitude, too. <laughs> okay. When you stop in the flipper, you can grab the arrow keys on your, on your thing and move. And... And it actually plays the sound sample slow or fast as you flip through it. Again, super helpful for, um, for dialogue thinking. So I was able to go through here... Can see that I already you know, I only looked at this once before, so I can see that's off. <laughs> so that, that needed to be a little more delayed. So what I can do is go. It sounds like 508 is where he really kind of starts to say welcome. I'm looking over here, frame 508, and uh, it. What I want on 508 is I want to be on that frame, which is end nine. I want to be at 508, so I can jump back over to the exposure sheet, and I can see here's 508, but I still want to be on endo 9, I think. So if I just drag that out, let's take a look at um, that part. And uh, what I can do is I can double click. Okay, if I double click one frame, I get white squares. What that's waiting for me to do is click one at the other end of the range. So if I click that, it highlights all those. Now you got to be careful because anything you do now, like in the cell panel, you could delete all those. But if I click to the flipper, it will just play that highlighted section, so you don't have to watch a whole whole part again. As much as you guys want to see the boogie and the woogie, we're just gonna play over again. <laughs> so, okay. So I actually think that the timing on the mouth open is right now. I, I think that looks good. The rest of it just looks really choppy because I need about 10 more drawings in there to, to flesh that out. But uh, and, I, and I feel okay about the, um, the hand poses and the posing and all that stuff. So when you're just sitting at your drawing table trying this out, it's, it's hard to figure out where do I need to add more drawings, where do I not need to add more drawings. It's very difficult. And this, of every system I've, I've used, to be honest, and I know I'm a little prejudiced because I'm a guy, but even on the PC, I haven't used a system that's as quick as this for, for dragging those frames and adding that out. And so right away, by doing that, I'm going to hit space bar to unselect all that. When I go up here, I look and I go, man, look at that. I got, <laughs> how many of this is? I got 15 frames of that, of that, uh, that frame. So I definitely need to add more in-betweens in there. So you saw how I was able to flip through on that. Um, there's something else here called the frame board. 
The frame board does not work with this resolution, apparently. I'm not sure why. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, I never got that before. Let me go back to a new scene. And... Take two pictures just so I can show you the frame board. See, that's the great. That's why you want to get like a video camera, a Sony security camera, so you don't have to go like that and reset it. Okay. I think that should work. Let's just put a A01. I'm just going to put two to see if I can get the frame board up. Alright, I lied. We'll do three. Okay. Picture panel. I'm going to select all of them and copy them on. See, I could do that too. Just select all of them, put them all on too. So now, frame board. No, I don't know what that is. Maybe, is it the overscan? Maybe I've never done that. Maybe it's the overscan. I didn't even enter a frame name in. I just clicked return and it went, okay, you didn't give me a name, so I'm going to make it A0001, and then it'll just go to the next one automatically. Okay, let's try this. Framework. Oh, no cells to flip. Picture panel, select the three, copy them on. Frame board. Okay. So the frame board, what the frame board does. And this looks a little more clear on my small monitor, but it will show uh, the frames in order. There's only three frames here, so it's looping back around on itself. But th when you click this frame, it will advance forward through the animation. This one will go backwards, and this one will make it go away. Or the two middle ones will, will make it go away. Where that's pretty neat is if you've got a long animation, really long, and you're like, I just want to get to that part where the guy jumps and does his little thing, you can go like this really quick to get to that part, and then where it stops, you're already highlighted on the, on the exposure sheet for, for where it is. So, so I thought that was really helpful. Okay, so you guys have seen the X sheet, the digitizer, the flipper. Um, you can, if you were somebody that was going to do uh, stop motion with this, instead of, um, instead of traditional animation, when you digitize, and you'd probably have your camera not set up like this, you'd probably have it set up on the side for your, your scene. Um, you would want to use the dub feature. What the dub feature does is, um, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to select, so you have to select, and that would maybe be the last one that you shot. So you dub to that, and what it does is, even though I've taken it off, it's showing the last, uh, the last frame, and it superimposes it. Now, Having the right lighting on here makes a gigantic difference for having a nice white piece of paper with a nice black line. Um, so forgive the fact that this is really not lit right and grainy. But my point is, is that if you had a if you had the remote control on here, let's do that. It'll be easier to see. Let me put the remote control. Let me take off the dub. No dub. Okay, let's shoot the remote control. Now I'm going to put on dub. I'm going to select that. Now if I move it, it shows me where it was. So that way if I go, I just want to move it a little bit, like maybe that far in this frame. Then I can hit it. And I can move it. I could change the dub. Which one is it showing me on the dub? I want to use that one for the dub. shows me and I can shoot it. So. That'd be really good for stop motion where you have a character and you want to see where the arm was on your little mannequin that you got set up for before so that you just move it a tiny bit. 
So I don't use the dub a lot, but if you're into stop motion, that might be a really cool feature to use. Um, never used negative, but this is what it does. It flips it like a negative. So, you know, maybe that's easier to see on, on some of it. By the way, um, you'll notice that, um, I don't know if you noticed or not by looking up here, but my character I drew with like a red colored pencil. These red and blue colored pencils, they were called non-photo blue and non-photo red. Back in the day, these wouldn't Xerox, but you, after, after I'm done with all my sketchy lines and I get the motion right and everything looks good, then I would take this back to my drawing board. I would take a pencil and put one nice clean line for the outline. Now what I would do then is um, I scan this into the Amiga, I'd load it up in like ImageFX or Ad Pro or something like that, and you can just wipe all the red out. So now all the red's gone, you got a nice clean line, and now you can do your bucket fill and bucket fill the areas of the animation that you want to fill in, you know, if that's the effect that, that you're going for. Um, Um, the sound panel. So I showed you the cell panel, the picture panel, the sound panel. Oops, uh, you got to start with the sample panel. You open up the sample panel and you can load. Now, one of the limitations here is that it can only load IFF 8 bit, you know, which is again not going to be your broadcast quality sound. But, um, but again, this is for testing. This is like grayscale pictures to show your things moving. Same thing with the sound. What you guys heard before, and, and I'll show you um, the difference here. So, where, where is it? Okay. So that was a recoverable alert. Okay. That happens on an Amiga. It's endearing. It's okay. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> They're not laughing at you, honey. It's okay. <laughs> She gets a little nervous under pressure. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I just gotta, oh. To really put any sounds down, you gotta have some cells. I don't, I don't even want to load any cells in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the picture panel. And you can click here. You see how this is white or black? White. I'm going to click this and it allows me to just put white frames. That animation I showed you before, that happened at one point. Like, you remember the part where the guy goes, yeah! Well, he was doing it in the wrong time and I needed to move all that forward. But I needed something in between. So I just grabbed white frames and filled it in. And then once I got the timing right, I was like, okay, now i got to put something in those white frames. But it's a good placeholder. So... If I just put, I'm going to put some white frames down. They're just, they're just white. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the sample panel. I'm going to load up the. I'm going to try to load that again. And okay. Again, kind of weird icons, but that one's like copy to it. This one's take it away. Um, that one's to just play it. And this is saying what level. Now, if you noticed, uh, we have levels for pictures. There's levels for soundtrack. So you can load samples and put them on different levels so that if you've got a sound, um, a sound for like maybe the door opens or the crash or the punch sound or something like that, you can load all those in separately. I, did, I just had everything in one um, thing because I did it in Studio 16, but, um, and then I just loaded it in. But see, it says, where do you go to? All right, so it loaded it up here. Well, I have this kind of short animation right now with only these white frames. So the music really never even got started. Or here, it gets started right down here, I can see. You can load up the um, sound panel. And you can click the offset. Let me move this up. Whoop, which I just think that's so easy, by the way, to drag it around. You can do an offset and slide it up so that the sound starts where you want it to. So it can go up. You can change the volume compared to other sound effects and you can change the pitch, which I haven't done a lot of. So now that sound is in there. 
so you guys heard that sound effect. Now, if I, um, just to show you in, in contrast, I know where this demo's on take two, not on Studio 16, but so I recorded all this um, in the Studio 16 of Gabriel um, doing that, and this is going to be obviously um, a lot higher quality. And I've layered you know the parts in here and I did that because if I ever want to take this animation to a better level I can come back and sync this with the par for output but that's not for testing right hmm not sure what happened there well anyway so you get the point so you can use whatever editing software you want for your sound I just saved it out as combined but if you did want to save those out as individual sounds, you can and take two, layer it. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and try here to, to do that. I'm going to go to sample panel. I'm going to try to load another sound effect. I think I have a whistle. And... I'm going to say to number two. So see when I switched that up here at the top, it went from soundtrack one. If I click this, like the second layer, it goes to soundtrack two. So I can put that on and copy the whistle on. So now there's soundtrack one, soundtrack two. But when I play it, I'm not sure what, uh, hold on. Are they both on? Three, four, one. Oh, I know why. Somebody didn't turn the sound output back to the Amiga output. I'm still in the Studio 16. Okay. So now I got the whistle in the two. So you can layer all that stuff in. And, and, and I think this is a really great visual way for you to be able to flip over and go, oh, you know, at 42 is where I want that whistle to happen. So I'm just going to go up here and drag it down to 42 and put it like right around there. And, and now it's going to happen at that point in your animation. So super easy um, to do that. You know, the drawing animation part of it, I think that sometimes that intimidates people to just get started and give it a go, but I would totally encourage you to do that. Um, they got some tutorial stuff online for some uh, walk cycles and stuff like that. There's actually, now with YouTube and everything, there's just so much free lessons to this stuff, you know what I mean? You used to have to pay a lot of money to learn how to do this. I could redo my art education that cost $60,000 for probably the price of a YouTube account, but I encourage you guys to do that because you could really, you know, I think there's a lot to learn. And, it, and, it's, and it's really fun. Um, the uh, video merging, you can shoot, it uses, you have to pick which is the transparent color, like in this case is white, but you can shoot, um, you can place pictures. If I go to a picture panel here, I, I did everything through the digitizer, right, shooting, but you can load up the picture panel and you can load both ILBMs and anims directly, okay? So you can load these, um, Load pictures, where's, uh, okay, load, okay, that's a high color scan, um, maybe ta Tarzan, where's Tarzan, is that going to be the same thing, yeah, that's a high color scan too, what about Wolfie? Aha, Wolfie. Okay. So I can take that and go to the second level and copy that on. 
and I think it did, it's just back up here, I think. Oh, I gotta select it. There it is. Okay. So now, it looks, no, here's the thing. It looks right now, you just have a white frame on the other one, and it's super, like, gray. It says in the manual, don't worry about that, because it's gonna look gray, especially if this was color stuff. Let's say you were doing full color stuff, until you merge. Once you merge the levels, it'll put everything back to, um, back, back to one. So, let me go to new scene again here for a second. And I'll just show you a couple things. So, this was on, I don't know if you guys ever played uh, Monster Force on Game Boy Color. This was uh, the pencil. You can see how rough it is. I mean, these are just like barely, that's not even a drawing. There's not even a face on it. But this was used, you know, to animate the, we would use this to test the characters back in 2001, um, before before we committed them, you know, onto the game to get the motion. Uh, and it's a great way to do that. I think that you could even do that um, if you were working in 3D, you could still um, um, load that. can't remember. Special effects, you know, that we were doing. These got translated into 2D stuff for 2D games at the time, but um, but again, we were able to use, and we didn't even care about the camera stuff up on the screen because we were just looking for the motion on it. Um, you can something that they didn't take advantage of in this last version, but they were trying to. They were thinking about it. The time code part of it. If you put that up there, you can see there's a uh, SMPTE time code. You can put it on screen. And so theoretically through the Rex port, you could sync this with other SMPTE time code devices like the Studio 16 or the PAR card, things like that. So that I think there's room for, for development in that department. Um, you can optimize the palette. You can flip horizontal, vertical. Um, this has a video monitor, which right now is off. But if you turn it on, it will take the um, uh, video output of a second device if you have it, so you could just be looking at the animation while your X sheet is open on, on one. Um, that's what I got, guys. That's take two. Um, I hope you like it. Do you guys have any questions right now? Does anybody have any questions about take two? Is there an undo feature? Okay, the question is, is there an undo feature? No, you must never make a mistake. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> there, um, and you know what? Honestly, there isn't um, much of an undo feature in this. Uh, the only thing though that's kind of catastrophic that you can do, because remember, you first load pictures into the picture panel and then you paste them into this. So on here, if I suddenly clicked on these and deleted them, like this, the five, six, seven, five, six, seven, and I got rid of it, um, It's not the end of the world because you can still just click the five, six, seven, and copy it right back in to to where it was. Um, and I, I never showed that before, but you can uh, you can double click a range. You can like click copy to, and you can paste which where you want that range to go through to, or you can or you can move it. So it's very hard to like blow your whole animation out of the water here. But you're but you're right. There is no undo for for that kind of stuff built into it. Um, any anybody else? Another question? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't promote, so it, it it does not do it. It's written in assembler, so it's writing straight to the Amiga hardware. It uses these layers, like the fact that the the frame board flips up on top of you know, um, and um, and the digitizer flips right up on top. It's it's using that stuff. Um, so it's, it's not graphics card friendly, but having said that, it's going through my Picasso 4 right now. It's retargeting the, or it's, uh, it's passing through the Amiga video signal. So if you've got a video card that will pass through the standard Amiga video signal, it'll, it'll certainly run. But it's not going to retarget to like a, you know, 1024 by 768 screen or something like that. Because it doesn't use MUI or, or anything like that on a public screen. Any, anything else? 
Do you, do you think I might be able to convince you guys to give uh, traditional animation a try? <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to the demo. I appreciate it.